Hi, welcome to my beginner's guide for Dorfromantik. I'm Icon and this video will guide you through the basic gameplay mechanics. I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks on how to improve your high scores and how to utilize those mechanics to your favor. And in the end, I'm going to give you a little bit of a summary of what I personally think about this game. And yeah, let's get started. So the basic goal about this game is quite simple. You place down tiles on the map and you want to survive as long as possible while achieving as many points as possible. You have 40 tiles to begin with and you receive new tiles whenever you complete a quest. Quests are, like you see here, always shown on these white marks and they are pretty simple in their nature yet complex to achieve. So this thing just says I want you to build three more houses on the edges of this tile. So we receive here the next tile and as you can already notice there's always a little bit of a preview of the next tiles after the one you're placing down and this one wants me to place down 21 or more trees. So one thing is worth mentioning with all these quests the game counts the exact amount of items. So on this tile for example are two, three, four, five, six, seven houses. On this tile are four trees and the game is very specific with that so let's continue. There are in total three different sorts of quests. And they all work the same. They want you to place down similar tiles, either two or more, or an exact amount of tiles, or an exact amount of tiles which closes off the area. But more about that later. So as we see here now, we received our first river tile. I'm very, very tempted to just place it down here. We can also rotate those tiles. Let's do this like that. As you see here, we now have begun a new quest. Now let's place down that forest tile here. And now we solved our first quest, received 100 bonus points for that, and most importantly received new tiles. So now we get our next river tile, followed by the next house tile, and also there's the first railroad beginning at this point. Railroads are just like rivers. You cannot place them down without connecting them to one of their friends, buddies, whatever. So here's the next tile that's fields. I already got a purple one that's lavender fields. And now we don't have any further quests. Let's talk about some other basic game mechanics. As you see here, when I connect the houses with each other, they, they, are, uh, they get a lit, they get lighted, lighted up. I'm pretty sure you see what I mean. So whenever we place down tiles we can also gain points for that. You gain 10 points for every border of a tile that matches to the border of the other tile. What that means I'll get 10 points if I connect these because I connect one house tile with another border of the house tile. You can achieve up to 60 points by doing that. You see your plus 10. If every six borders of a tile would perfectly match and fit, fit each other. That's uh, rather unlikely, but it's uh, worth trying to do th uh, to um, focus on these things if you want to go for high scores. So here we received another uh, river tile. And as you might already notice, it's about time to think and plan a little bit because it's really easy to build yourself into a corner if you don't take care about that. So I'm trying to let those rivers flow into directions where they are not obstructed. Same goes for the railroads. So here we go, more river tiles. And here I could go for different um, directions. It would be either a good idea in my opinion to form a little bit of a loop here or just uh, go for a long river. It's up to you. Not that easy to tell and there are really almost no general truths in this game because there's too much RNG and the tiles can have wild variations. So as you see here there's a rail tile connected to the river. These are by far the most nasty tiles. Okay so we're nailing down quest after quest with no problems at all. 
So with these quests and the beginning of the game, everything is really easy. I've already noticed that the longer you play a match, the more difficult the quests will be that you receive. So if you're really about high score hunting, you should always pay attention to where you place down tiles. Oh yeah, here I can demonstrate. Here is a plus 20 tile because the fields connect with two borders. Just like that. If I would be connecting those forests, uh, those trees with each other, it would be even more points. And with these little things, you can optimize your point gain massively. And also keep it, uh, keep attention on connect large connected areas. For example, this is a 32 house quest. It's already down to six when we start out here. So, so I'm just placing down tiles a little bit more mindlessly now, because it's about time to meet our next friends, the more complicated quests. So, here it goes. Let's put this down here. As you see at the beginning of the match also, there are only easy quests spawning. That's those quests where you just can add as many items as you want into the schedule, uh, into the, uh, the, the plot. And this is also a period where you can or should play better than me here and try to glue together as many parts that have fitting borders as possible because this is your long-term gains. Ah, oh, yeah, here we got our first friend. This one has no plus behind it. And if we would connect it to the other tiles, it would instantly fizzle because this tile wants only eight houses and not a single one more and that's where things can get a little bit complicated so we're now placing it down here and creating a new a new village core basically so here we go let's place that down like this keep options open continue with off a little forest here and as you see here we're uh, piling up new tiles with that, even more with this. We're finishing two quests at once, not bad, not bad. So with this fella here, as you see, I'm now waiting for a for a good tile to come. And uh, let's let's do this. As you see here, I'm connecting this one with another quest now, because there's one really nice thing to know. As soon as this quest here is done, it doesn't care if I add more items to to the patch. So basically as soon as I have now connected a tile which has only one more house, I would have finished that quest. And here goes our last and most nasty friend. This is the hardest quest of all. When they have that little triangle up there, it means it wants you to add 14 houses and end the patch there which means with the last piece you fit in there have to be no more open borders which give you the ability to add more houses into that patch which is really really brutal so you have to end the cluster with that and most of the time that really doesn't work out at all and these uh, quests are really good at ending your runs and are also really, really good at making you ponder way too long about things. So right now I'm just playing very casually and mindlessly, but as you might have already noticed, it's really easy to think and even overthink stuff in this game, like tremendously. And yeah, oh yeah, look at this. Here's our one house we were looking for. And oh, I'm now, I've now made a mistake. The river tile here blocks me from going this way, so we're just going to finish one of those quests and block and, and uh, kill the other one because there's no more tiles to connect it to. So that's a, another thing you should pay attention to. Place your tiles in a way that things, well, can still be expanded if you need that. So Dorf Romantic is a game which is awesome an awesome example for easy to pick up 
and difficult to master because there's really nothing easy about this game if you want to go for really high high scores but at the same time you can just plug down mindlessly tiles until you run out of tiles try to achieve as many quests during that as possible and not give too much about the rest this is also very very easy possible and you can enjoy the game also by playing it like that so that's one thing i really really admire about this game and i think that's one of its uh, strongest suits and that pretty much ends also the beginner's tips and tricks section that i opened up here because there's really not much more to it keep pre-thinking as much as possible try to avoid building yourself into corners like i did here and uh, most importantly enjoy the game the way it is most fun for you because there's uh, really no correct way of playing it except for having fun with it. So I hope that was kind of helpful for you and gave you a nice impression about the game in case you were still doubtful if you wanted to play it or not. I can strongly recommend it because it's uh, a very relaxing and peaceful experience even if you're just uh, messing around like I do here because I have given up playing focused a while ago because uh, explaining and playing focus doesn't really go well together. Alrighty, so feel free to drop me a comment down below if you have any further questions about the game. Ask away, I'd be really delighted to answer those. Also, if there's anything you feel like I should really told you that and I missed that out, drop it down in the comments uh, as well. This is no competition. I'm happy if you guys find stuff out that I've simply haven't found out yet. And as usual, a thumbs up really helps a lot to make this uh, video more visible. Or if you like that content, check out my channel, drop me a subscription, turn on those notifications and you won't miss any future content from my side. Whatever might be the case, thanks for your time and enjoy gaming. See you soon. Bye bye.